it has never been a better time to start upgrading and migrating your Xamarin Forms applications to .NET MAUI because there is some brand new tooling built into Visual Studio 2022 that walks you through the entire process or even the command line to get you up and running in just minutes, to be honest with you, based on your application. And I'm going to go through a real world application from start to finish and do the entire migration all from Visual Studio. So tune in. Hey everyone, I'm James and I'm back today talking about how to migrate your existing Xamarin Xamarin Forms applications to .NET 6, 7, 8, whatever you might be on, wherever you're watching this video, 9, 10, 11, 12. And of course, migrating those Xamarin Forms apps to the evolution of Xamarin Forms, which is .NET MAUI. Now, I'm not going to cover iOS and Android specific if you're not using Xamarin Forms, but I actually do have a great blog post covering all of that. What we're going to focus on is migrating and updating our Xamarin Forms apps to .NET MAUI. And this is ever important because in May of 2024 is end of support for Xamarin iOS, Android Mac, and Xamarin Forms. And you'll need to upgrade and migrate over to .NET 6, 7, 8. And of course, if you want to, obviously, if you're using Xamarin Forms, migrate to .NET MAUI, which is the evolution of Xamarin Forms. And the team built in the ability to upgrade automatically to .NET MAUI from Xamarin Forms. And there's some brand new tooling in Visual Studio 2022 or from the command line to handle everything. Now, there are a few things that I want to preface here before you actually get started. First and foremost, you wanna take a second, analyze your project and look at all of your dependencies. Go and check to make sure that they've been upgraded to .NET MAUI or .NET 5, 6, 7, 8, whatever it is. And that includes libraries. And of course, that includes any control libraries that you're using. So if you're using things from like Syncfusion or Telerik or DevExpress, make sure that those controls are available. Or of course, if you're using a community package, check those out. Also take a look at any third party binding libraries it might be using and make sure that those are upgraded as well. And of course, reach out to those maintainers or if one of the binding libraries is available, you can always upgrade it yourself. So those are some things to consider before you start migrating and updating. I also like to do a side by side. That's something that I like to do because I don't want to stop shipping my existing application. I want to kind of go through the cycle there. Now, this is ever important because in May 2024, that's the end of support for Xamarin and Xamarin Forms. So you'll want to migrate. And of course, you always want to stay up to date with the latest operating system. So what we're going to do is go through a full migration today and everything that we need to do. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the application that we're going to be migrating is one that I actually did a while ago on one of my live streams, but that was really early tooling and a lot has changed. So we're going to go ahead and see how easy it is to get up and running. So this is the My Coffee application. You can find it on my GitHub. And here we can see there's different, you know, different styles of espresso. There's a fly out here with My Coffee's databases, image caching, settings, all those different things inside of there. Now, this is actually a fairly real world application. We have some dependencies over here, like, you know, this monkey store and MVVM helpers and SQLite. We're using the Xamarin Community Toolkit, Xamarin Essentials, and Xamarin Forms over here. We can also see down here we have the Android and iOS app. And of course, I had a Windows app. I'd have a Windows app on there as well. Uh, and this has all sorts of things. You saw custom fonts, font icons, all those goodies inside of there. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is actually go to the .NET website if you want to learn more about this feature called the Upgrade Assistant. This is a great add-in for Visual Studio or the command line that helps you upgrade your existing applications to the modern frameworks. So for example, here it supports MVC, WinForms, WPF, Xamarin Forms, .NET MAUI, and so much more. So that's what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is go to Extensions, Manage Extensions, and we're going to search for the upgrade assistant right there. Now I've already installed it, but if you haven't, you'll see like a little download button here and then just close visual studio. It will install. It takes a few minutes and you'll be ready to go. All right. That's it. Now here, the upgrade assistant specifically manages in this case, our net standard sh uh, shared project that we have over here that has all of our uh, custom fonts and our packages. And it's using obviously Xamarin forms. And when you right click, you'll see an upgrade option. Now notice that I'm not selecting the Android or iOS project. It can't upgrade those. It can upgrade this.NET standard project. So we're going to go ahead and do that and hit upgrade. 
And there's two options here, in place and side by side. And again, I'm a big fan of side by side. That way your existing app continues to run. It's all great, everything like that. So we're going to select that. The upgrade target that we're going to select is a new project. And we'll hit that next. And I'm just going to leave it as my coffee app core. This is actually going to go through and create a library that we're going to kind of throw away, but we'll see what well, you'll see what I mean here in a few minutes. Now you can select what framework you want. Now I've done at seven installed here with uh, just the current version I have today. But if you wanted to try out at eight, you could do that as well. So select what version you want to upgrade to. Now that's going to list out all the different components that we have available to upgrade. And what this is going to do is going to go through, obviously, first, all of our dependencies and all of our packages and everything like that in there. And this is going to analyze and say, well, Xamarin Community Toolkit, Xamarin Essentials, and Xamarin Forms, those has got to go. So Xamarin Forms is obviously now .NET MAUI evolved to. Xamarin Essentials is now built into .NET MAUI. And the Xamarin Community Toolkit is now the .NET MAUI Community Toolkit, as you would expect. And then here are just third-party packages uh, that I'm using as well. Then it's going to go through all of the other code that I have. So all the helpers, all my uh, services, all my view models, and all my views. And it's going to look for all of the different attributes, for example, that are referencing Xamarin Forms or in the code behind, for example, Xamarin Forms and the XAML that's inside of it. Now, if we look at the upgrade assistance, there's some things that I don't want to actually have it move over or modify. I'm going to add it later. First are my custom fonts. We'll just add those manually in a bit. And then additionally, I don't need it to do anything to this getting started.txt file. You might not even have that. And I also have this assembly info file. I don't really need this because we're going to use new modern .NET MAUI uh, exports uh, for fonts and XAML compilations on by default. So why even bring that over? Let's just go ahead and remove that. Everything else, let's go ahead and upgrade that selection. Now, what's going on here, if I upgrade do the output and go to the upgrade assistance, is it's analyzing every single file, every single reference, every single thing inside of my application. That's going to output here a really rich uh, output if I want to dive through the details. But we can also see a real time display of the upgrade assistant upgrading my application. And honestly, it took like no time at all to do so. And this is a relatively complex app with a lot of view models, a lot of XAML, a lot of things like that. Now let's see what we have. Now we have this My Coffee app core. And if I double tap on that, we can see that this is now targeting Android, iOS, and Windows. Uh, here it has some supported platform. But the most important thing is that this is just a library. This is a library we could add to an existing uh, .NET MAUI application, for example, uh, or we could just use it and you know, copy these files into that project if we have one. That's what we're going to end up doing. But we have all the packages here and we have the reference to the shared project. So that's nice. This actually has a little shared model folder with some coffee inside of it. So it knows to bring that in automatically. So that's pretty cool. All right. Now, a few things that it didn't do is that it did not, for example, upgrade my packages. So the ones that I have that it didn't know about, these are just random packages I'm using. It didn't upgrade those, right? Those are just still the same version. But notice that the community toolkit is now the .NET MAUI flavor of it, right? So it's all there automatically, and that's really, really cool. It got rid of Xamarin Essentials, Xamarin Forms, and the Xamarin Community Toolkit and upgraded it for me automatically. Now again, this is an upgrade assistant, so we'll see what it did and how it helped us out. But the first thing I wanna do is actually just create another folder here, and I'm gonna add this in. I'm just gonna call it Xamarin Forms. Again, this is just to help me organize, and I'm just gonna move those in there so we can collapse them down. So now we just have my new .NET MAUI library here. Okay, let me just go ahead and close all these tabs. And what we're gonna do is just simply compile it up and let's see if it compiles. That's the most important part. And the answer is maybe, maybe yours will. It depends on what happens and how close it was. In my case, it looks like we have a few issues here. The first is that there is a, uh, ambiguous uh, reference to color. And it needs to know, do I mean um, system drawing color, Android graphics color, Android resources color, Microsoft Maui graphics color? Well, we want system drawing color, that's for sure. I'm going to copy this because I think there's a few other errors in there with that. If we look here, we can also see that Xamarin Forms doesn't exist. I was aliasing command as a Xamarin Forms command. So let me go ahead and do that there and remove it. 
and now it's going to be mad at me. So we can say, yeah, use the Maui controls command that's built in. Cool. All right. What else do we got going on here? All right. It's looking good. Let's go ahead and compile it one more time. We'll see if we get further. So we compile their code and the next thing it's going to do is go a little bit deeper here and we can see the same thing. We actually used to use Xamarin forms colors, um, and that or color, I think, or colors, and that was alias to system drawing color. So we need to be a little bit more specific here. And I'm going to do colors dot black and colors dot white to system drawing color dot black system dot drawing dot color dot white. All right, we're getting closer. Right, what else do we have going on here? All right. If we look at our errors, we have a few more this time inside of XAML. So now it's doing com XAML compilation. If we pull this up, we can see that what it did for me inside my XAML is it went and it upgraded all of my namespaces. It even upgraded my toolkit too, from the Xamarin toolkit to the .NET MAUI toolkit. But there were some changes inside of the .NET MAUI community toolkit. For example, item selected event args converter changed to selected item event args. It moved that around. So we're going to need to fix that up in a few areas. There we go. And do that again. There we go. So there's three of those references. And let's see if we're getting closer here. And all of our errors have gone away. So that's pretty cool. Like so far, everything is compiling. So I like that. Uh, now, if I set this as my startup project, we can see that I can't actually compile or run it or do anything because it's just a library. We actually need an application to put this in. But besides that, everything else is running. We see that we do have a, we have our Maui program here. And again, this is the startup for the .NET Maui app, which is different how it worked with a Xamarin forms. And this is automatically configured with the Maui community toolkit, which is pretty cool. I was, isn't configuring anything else, uh, like our fonts or any debugger stuff that a normal file new project would do. So we'll take a look at that here in a few seconds, but we have our app shell. We have our app.xaml. And we have all of our other code inside of here. And like I said, all the namespaces are cleaned up. In fact, if I go into my settings, it, it knows automatically that I'm using Microsoft Maui storage preferences because that's built in. But do notice that there's a few things that, you know, aren't being used. Like for example, newer C sharp features. It's not like it upgraded all my namespaces to newer, modern indented, you know, C sharp like that. So that could be something I do in the future, for example. But we are good. We are compiling, but we want to put this on an actual app, right? That would be kind of good. So I'm going to add a new project here into it, and we're going to create a .NET Maui app. And this is going to be my Maui coffee app. Perfect. And again, you're going to select the same framework version that you selected when you were upgrading the project. So for me, uh, .NET 7 in this case. So if you had .NET 8, .NET 8, .NET 9, .NET 9. So this is kind of important. If we look over here, uh, let me just go ahead and close all these tabs. We have our core and our coffee app. Now you could specifically like reference this directly, but I'm a big fan of single project, putting everything inside of it. But the reason I created the app separate is that I have now a platforms folder where I can put platform specific code. So some of the things, for example, uh, that I was doing inside of my Android application was I was using some of these assembly dependencies, for example, and I was, uh, inner, um, I was, uh, implementing this I environment and this I toast, for example. So I could put this code directly in the Android project, which would be pretty nice. Um, and I have those over here. I also have these resources. Go ahead and expand that here. So we can see that I have my app icons, fonts, images, splash screens, all that stuff. So I could then get access to all that goodness that .NET MAUI is doing for me. And then we have an app shell uh, and an app. Now this app by default is using some default stylings, but what we saw is I had my own styling. So I probably want to use my own. And the app shell is just displaying the main page. So what I like to do is I like to delete the app app shell and main page. Now this might be a little bit different for you based on what your project setup is, but I'm just going to delete those three because I already have these in my uh, core. Now, one thing though, is I do want to keep this Maui program because while it is a little bit different than what I had before, um, um, 
with the core. It, it does have some nice pre-configured fonts, so I'm just going to keep these. It has a logger in there for me automatically, so we're going to keep that. Now, here's what I like to do. I like to first go into my coffee app and just copy my uh, NuGet packages that I had configured. So I'm just going to open up this. I'm just going to go ahead and paste these in here. So there's some nuggets there. Just paste these nuggets in there. So we're good to go. And then I had this shared project. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag and drop that onto my dependencies of my Maui app. There we go. So that automatically configures it for me and we're great. So all those nuggets packages will come back in and that should uh, restore. Perfect. Now at this point, again, could just kind of drag and drop this as a dependency, but I like to put everything in one place just it's way easier for me. So I am literally going to take everything but the Maui program and drag and drop it into the My Maui Coffee app. Okay. And that's going to make a copy of all of them there. And you can see actually in the CS project writes a bunch of stuff in here. So we can just delete all that. We don't need any of that there. Um, and it's totally good to go. But the Maui program, uh, CS here not only will configure iOS and Win Android and Windows, but also Mac Catalyst. And output type is XE, gives us a root namespace. It uses a single project, implicit, implicit usings, because it's all of our app identifiers. So you can reconfigure this from your Xamarin Forms app, for example. And then it gives us all our supported platforms. So this is really nice. And we get all of our Maui images, splash screens, all that stuff. Now, what we need to do is double check our Maui program. And the first thing is that it says, well, oh, you need to add, you know, you're using for the app because it's a different namespace. We could align the namespace, but we're just going to bring in using my coffee app because that is coming from this namespace here, which is nice, which is what it used to be. And then here I can say use Maui community toolkit. So that will automatically add it there, which is, which is nice. Perfect. There we go. All right. So we're getting a lot closer. And if I set this as my startup project, uh, we can go ahead and try to compile the actual project and see what happens at this case at this point. Because here, what we have is we have our main app with all of our stylings. And as long as these are valid, right? I don't think is something has changed. Um, I know one change in Don and Maui is that if you are doing on platform, the default is required or making sure that all the platforms are supported. It does do that check. But as long as these are all valid, this should all sort of just kind of work ideally inside of your application. So again, we're just going to let it go ahead and compile up here, at least on Windows first, and we'll see what sort of happens at the end of the day. Um, we're going to get normal output. We're going to get normal things inside of our application as far as compiling up in debugging our Maui application. So let's just go ahead and give it a second to compile up and then we'll hit debug and see if it runs. All right, I'm just going to hit debug and then it should install it on my machine and we should be totally good to go. And let's fingers cross, see what happens here. And this is a pretty full world application. So we'll see what we have. All right, we actually have our app up and running. Amazing. There we go. Now uh, we are missing a few things. We have our fly out, of course, which is nice. Uh, but it does seem like we're missing a few styles here where it's not expanded across. So we could go ahead and take a look at that inside of our uh, app shell. And then additionally, we're missing fonts and we're missing images as well, right? So that is something previously before that we would add into a font folder, or we may add that into um, the platform specific to do that. So let's go ahead and fix that up and just configure those fonts. Because that's one thing that is going to make this application complete. So I have my folders over here and inside of my old coffee app, I have resources and I have fonts and I'm just going to go ahead and take these and here under fonts, let's go ahead into our app and I'm just going to go ahead and drag these in. Perfect. All right. Now inside of our uh, application from before, uh, we had a little bit of uh, metadata here about what we were calling these fonts aliases. So let's go back over into our Don and Maui application here. All right. Now I'm just going to go ahead and paste these in here just so I have them. There we go. And what we can do is we can just simply configure a bunch of fonts. So I'm just going to paste in four of these and 
easy enough. Just simply copy and paste. And then we don't even need alias in here, so that's good. So that is the alias. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste since these are all the same. And again, copy and paste. And then we'll just remove that alias equals. And again, you won't have to do this if you don't have custom fonts, but if you do have custom fonts like me and font icons and images, you'll definitely want to do this. Perfect. All right. So that's going to go ahead and configure those fonts for us automatically. Now, the other thing is that how Donna Maui handles images, there's just an images folder here. So you can just drop images in there or even SVGs that'll be um, uh, reformatted for you. So we're going to go ahead and take a look. I have uh, probably this inside my Android app and I have um, resources and let's see drawables. There's my coffee bag and I can just go ahead and drag that coffee bag in there. Now, how this works in Donna Maui is I have videos on this, but it's going to look specifically for, you know, uh, any font that's inside of here. We can see this is being added and removed and all these things automatically. And you, of course, can clean up any of these uh, uh, things inside of here, which I like to do because they're all automatically handled for me. So just in case something goes a little funky, you can just simply remove those because there are these regexes here that will handle all that configuration for me. All right, now hopefully if I go ahead and rebuild, uh, what we want to see is some custom fonts and icons coming in here. And then additionally, our uh, image that we have that we saw over on our Android app. That's just an image that's going on there. So hopefully that all comes in and looks something similar to that. So again, let's go ahead and let it have it recompile and we'll give it a go. Now, when it compiled, we actually got an error here. And this is because the font uh, files actually have a must, must have a specific name. They can't have dashes in them. So that's actually something we're going to have to fix. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rename each of these. And I'm going to say FA brands, FA regular for font awesome. So I'm going to rename FA regular and then FA solid. So let me go ahead and rename those. So this is something you might run into, especially if you're grabbing those. And then again, I can just go ahead and update these here automatically. There we go. Awesome. And again, I like to clean up my, I like to clean up my, my, uh, uh things here. So there we go. We're totally should be good to go. All right, let's go ahead and recompile it one more time. And hopefully now we get a full compilation with any of our errors out of the way. All right, let's go ahead and debug this and let's see if we have our images and fonts and everything up and running. And sure enough, there we go. We have our fonts and our images inside of here. Now there is something to pull up here is that you can see that between these two, there is missing a little bit of space and this because we're using a grid in this case. And there's some differences in how .NET MAUI and Xamarin Forms rendered a few different controls. You'll want to check out the documentation, which I'll link to below about some of those changes. But just like that, we have all of our icons and all those things coming up. There's probably a few little things for me to, to take a look at, but all in all, this is looking pretty good. And I actually have an, a Windows application now, which I didn't have before, right? So that's really nice. Now, one final, final bit that I want to talk about is that we are missing some of those dependencies that we were registering previously before. All right, well, what about handling this platform specific code? You can see here inside of my Xamarin Forms app, inside the Android app, we have some assembly exports here for dependencies. If we scroll down, we have the toast and then the I environment that's setting the status bar color. Well, we're gonna bring this over, but we'll no longer be able to use this dependency assembly export to my knowledge. That'll just return null. It won't be able to scan the assemblies at startup. I don't know if the team just removed that for performance reasons or what, but that seems to always return null. But there's still a way to use it, even though I definitely recommend upgrading to the latest dependency injection service that's built into Don and Maui, which I've done a video for here on the channel and I'll link to docs. But let's go ahead and first just copy this environment over. And for simplicity's sakes, we'll just add it to the same exact kind of main activity inside of our uh, Android code. So I'm gonna go into the My Maui Coffee app platforms, Android, and then main activity. You could obviously create a file here as well. That'd be nice and, and work too. So let's paste that in there. And now what we get is all of our code kind of coming in. So we have the set status bar uh, over here. We have our build information. Uh, we can see that the platform and current activity still works because that is built in to the sort of 
Xamarin Essentials migration there. But the only thing that isn't coming in for me is this two platform uh, color. And again, it looks like when I copied and pasted, it brought in the according namespaces. So that's nifty. So what we'll have to do here is give it an Android graphics color. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this here. I'm just going to say var AC for Android color. And I'll say new. Um, this takes in a uh, what does it take in? It takes in an android.graphics.color. And this specifically can take in an RGB. There we go. So I will say color.r, color.g, and then color.b. Perfect. And then I'll just pass this AC into here, and we're good to go. Now, I can't just copy over this assembly export. That's not going to work. Instead, we're going to go into my Maui program here. Now, if I was using the new dependency injection service, I could say, for example, here, if Android, and then end if, and you can do this for any of this conditional compilation. You can do if, you can do Windows, you can do iOS, you can do Mac Catalyst, you can access those things. If you leave the namespaces the same, then you won't have to really worry about that. But I've only implemented this on Android, so it's only going to be available there. If I was using the new dependency service, I would say builder.services. And then I could add you know, things like a scope, a singleton, a, a transient. But if I go into my theme over here, we're going to see that I am using this dependency service.get. So that's not going to work um, for me. And this is a static class. So unless I was to register this theme and then go through this again, I might just want to get my app up and running first and worry about these iterative updates later. So let's go ahead and instead of doing that, we can say dependency service dot register, and I'm going to register my environment. All right, there we go. Now this is going to come in and resolve out my interface as well. So that's really helpful for me. Now remember that I specifically over here created this in the same namespace. All right. So if you have a different namespace, you want to add that namespace here and be careful in case you end up doing some different usings here. Oh, and we can get rid of these exports as well. There we go. Perfect. All right. That's literally it. So this will register it manually for us. And we should be able to now run this on my Android device. And I should get back that dependency for me inside of that theme. So that will be the ideal scenario there. So here we go. Uh, applications up and running. Instead of getting this purple bar at startup, we should get the matching theme color here. So if I go to the E, we can say I have my environment, my coffee app that environment, and that should go ahead and set it accordingly, just like that, which is super duper nice. All right. So now we've started to migrate and modernize our dependencies, which is nice uh, in our application. So that's one thing that we need to, to do, obviously. And then, of course, there might be some other ones that we'll want to register as well. So kind of be aware of that as you're going through the process. Now, over on the documentation side, this is the final thing I want to end with, is that there's some other things you might want to sort of be aware of, right? When you're upgrading here, this is going to be great documentation that's open and updated all the time of migrating those Xamarin native projects or Xamarin Forms projects. Inside of the Xamarin Forms projects, there's stuff about the upgrade assistant, upgrading manually, layout behavior changes, even how to reuse custom renderers, migrate custom renderers, and reuse effects. They're all there for you. Here's some information about invoking platform code. I'll put these in the show notes below, of course. So I'll show you how to do all the conditional compilation, how to register it automatically with the dependency injection service and things like that. And then finally, one thing to really be aware of is that the messaging center no longer is around. It was deprecated in .NET 7 and was replaced with the .NET Community Toolkit for MVVM, which has a weak reference messenger, which I specifically did a video on here on the channel as well. So I'll put a link to that too. Well, there you go. Everything you kind of need to know, lots of great documentation, and hopefully this gave you a good insight from going from start to finish and having a full running migrated Xamarin forms to .NET MAUI application. All right, there you have it. It's really just that easy to start migrating and upgrading your existing Xamarin Forms projects to .NET MAUI. Now, there's a few things, like I said, that you should also consider doing. One is you should probably get rid of the old dependency injection service and use the new dependency injection service that's built in if you're using Shell that will cascade it down automatically. Now, one thing that this also didn't do um, is 
migrate or update any of my MVVM code. And this is something where I love the .NET Community Toolkit for MVVM that simplifies all that code. So you'd probably want to also go through that. Now, the other thing would be icons, splash screens, maybe converting some of those PNGs over to SVGs. That would be super good and dropping those in there. And of course, bring any string translations you may have and all that same code should work. And then also upgrading using some new C-sharp features, right? Some of those short namespaces some pattern matching in there. Some of the things that Visual Studio will walk and help you update your code now that you're on modern C-sharp, whether 11, 12, whatever you happen to be on. And then again, make sure that you're analyzing those renderers and effects, and even if you need them anymore. Now, in my case, I don't really have any of those. So my, my upgrading here was pretty seamless as that, as that goes. Now, I didn't have any too many third party dependencies, but I also want to double check those NuGet packages, right? Upgrade those NuGet packages there because that's one thing that the upgrade assistant's not going to do. It's going to do what it can, but it's not going to magically upgrade this random MVVM helpers library. Do I even need it anymore? It's something to analyze there. Now, this to me is a very, very nice way of jumping forward instead of having to go and update all those namespaces and those things automatically. Um, or manually, I should say, and this does it for you automatically. Some people like to just do file new and this hand convert every file and move it all in there. That's definitely a way based on your project and based how big and maybe how legacy it is. But for me, I've gone through all of my projects and I've followed the same exact mechanism here. When I'm done, what I end up doing is I sort of put all of my Maui code in the same folder that my Xamarin forms was in. I align all my namespaces, make sure it's all cleaned up. And I check that in to source control and you always create a branch when you're doing this. So you're totally good to go and I move it off. So basically at the end of the day, I just have one project, one folder that is my .NET Maui application. It's super seamless. I super really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave it below. Let me know how your experience with the upgrade assistant has gone. Like I said, I've been upgrading all my projects. And of course there's manual work to do um, here, um, but this app is relatively complex and it is working fairly good out of the box. I'll put a link to the final repo that you can go ahead and pull down and check out today. And if you have any questions, like I said, leave them below. And if you did like this video, give it a thumbs up and jam the subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching. Happy migrating up to Don and Maui. And I also have videos here on the channel covering all of the topics that you might want to go into the dependency service, navigation, Don and community toolkit, all the new resource stuff. So definitely I'll leave links to all that below. And again, thanks for watching and have a good one.